All right, on his disclaimer now forum, trigger warning, but at least I told you so. Hey Forum, Manny back here with another video on the Cascade Sense Fragrance Station, and this one will be a tier list on some of your favorite designer brands. But before we get into it, as always, again, 500 likes and a random subscriber in the comments will be the lucky recipient of an assorted niche fragrance sample pack. So if you'd like your shot at that, again, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And also be sure to hit the notification bell as well, because I'll have more fun videos like this, hopefully for you guys in the near future as well. But speaking of this video, this is going to be a tier list. So if you're unfamiliar with tier lists, it's something that we use in gaming to distinguish what is really good and what is really bad. F being fail, of course, at the very bottom, and S being superb, special, or super at the very top. So without further ado, let's get into it, starting with the F tier. All right, that looks pretty bad. So we're going to start off with Burberry here. Now, Burberry is kind of irrelevant to me outside of the fragrance London for men. And London's a nice, warm, slightly spicy offering, but it's been reformulated to death. So when you're trying to wear something like that for the cold weather, which is what you would do, it's not going to be able to cut through it, sadly. And then on top of that, a lot of the newer Francis Kirkjohn stuff has been pretty piss poor if you ask me for whatever season you use that stuff in. Now, no, I just think he's done a pretty horrible job as far as being the in-house perfumer for Burberry lately. So that's why I put Burberry in F tier. Moving on to CK now, and keep in mind, guys, that this is time sensitive. This is how I feel about these brands now and what they're doing most recently. And I think that they've been pretty irrelevant for a really long time as far as what's good fragrance wise, at least in the community and outside the community. I mean, Shock was getting some talk a recent time ago, and I can't say I've owned any since Into You from back in the day, so I'm just not too keen on this brand. That's why they're also in F tier. Moving on, we have Diesel and Bad, and I'd say only the Brave are probably their most prominent offerings right now. And to me, they're both worse than the literal word bad. Like, they're both fails. That's why they're in F tier, if you ask me. And I can't say that there's anything else from this brand that is currently redeeming. And last but not least, in F tier, we have Nautica. And Nautica actually formulated their most popular fragrance in and outside the fragrance community called Voyage. Very nice aptly slash marine scent that you'd use for maybe the pool or maybe going to the gym. And it didn't need to get worse. I understand that kind of stuff happens. However, despite their price point, I couldn't say that I would actually buy anything else from this brand. I'd really only buy Voyage nowadays and unfortunately Voyage ain't too hot anymore. So that's why Nautica is in F tier. But that's about it for F. We're going to move on to the E tier now. First off, we have Azaro. And Azaro, of course, is most known for things like Chrome and or Azaro Puram. But real talk, the wanted line is not as bad as some people are making it out to be club-wise. I think people are extra triggered because of that bottle design, to be honest. I do like Wanted by Night, personally. And that ambery stuff from the Azaro Puram line is also kind of nice. But I can't say that I own any of this stuff. So since not any of this is really that bottle-worthy to me, that's why I have to put them in E tier. But shout-outs to Azaro for still trying. Next up, we have Jean-Paul Gaultier. And honestly, this Puig era has been kind of shite for them. The reformulations to Le Mal makes that reformulated fragrance even further more worse. Ultra Mall is no longer that club beast from four years ago either. And that only really leaves Fresh slash Popeye slash Superman as far as something that is kind of noteworthy for this brand for me. And since I don't even own that, that's why this whole brand JPG is an E tier. Sorry, Golche fans. I know there's a lot of you out there, but let's be real. For right now, they ain't doing so hot. And last but not least in E tier, here we have Ralph Lauren. And since I can't think of a single person on this planet who says that Ralph Lauren is their favorite brand within fragrance alone. That's why Ralph Lauren has to be in E tier. Like maybe Supreme Leather has been a decent release for them in the last four years. But outside of that, they're resting on the laurels of their previous OG polo fragrances. And I'm not really looking out for that stuff. And I don't think most of you are. That's why Ralph Lauren is in E tier. Next up, we have the D tier category. Here we go. So firstly, we got Carolina Herrera. And oh my gosh, what a hot mess this is. Really not feeling good, girl. CH Men reformulated. And I hated it initially. Like, I don't think the combination of grass with sugar and leather is chic or nice at all for me. I do like CH Men Privé though. I think that's a really good boozy fragrance for the designer level. But outside of that, I really just don't like this line too much. 212 and all of its flankers, whatever. So that's why Carolina Herrera is in D tier. But at least they got the variety. Next up, we have Gucci. And let's be real, guys. Gucci hasn't been dope since Tom Ford. So what can I say? Any of this new stuff that has been coming out ain't too hot. I mean, absolute points to them for trying. And the other stuff has been kind of generic. So D tier for Gucci. Next up, we have Hugo Boss. And Boss actually has some cool fragrances outside of the Boss bottled line, like uh, Reverse recently, for example, which I know 
Chaos Fragrances is also talked about. But as far as their calling card in Boss Bottled and all of its flankers, none of them feel bottle worthy to me. I haven't owned one of them in at least five years. Although I do like Intense, although I do like Oud, it's just they're not in my collection right now. So that's why this whole brand is in D tier. All right, guys, moving on. I know I sound like I'm just hating, but don't worry, we'll get to some of the good stuff later on in this list. But continuing with some of the average slash bad in D tier, here we have Issei Miyake. Now the famed Japanese brand I am is of course mainly known for their low Dise Poram line. Lots of great freshies over the years like the original and of course the summer iteration each year. But I really do like this brand for actually branching out and doing some darker stuff. Nuit Dise Noir Argent I think is really pleasant as well. Maybe I'll get that into my collection eventually, who knows. But since right now I'm not really feeling anything here and I can't see this brand being as a whole a favorite amongst most community members, that's why for me and for you guys, I have to put it in D tier. Also, Lodi Say Poram reformulations are really bad right now. Big shell of itself. It's just not good anymore. I don't know anyone who's looking out for that specifically in 2019. All right, moving on now to Pen Giant in Mont Blanc. And Mont Blanc's known for some of their crowd pleasers outside of their pens, of course. Stuff like Emblem, Emblem Intense, Legend. And that stuff, I guess, is nice for the last 10 years. I have to give them props for at least selling. I hope they are selling. I think they are. But the thing is, they really aren't selling to me. I haven't picked up anything of theirs in the last two years. And if this list was kind of just only based on how I felt, I think they'd be a little lower on this list. But since a lot of y'all are feeling them, that's why I put them in D tier. Shout out to Mont Blanc. But moving on in the D tier, yes, this is a pretty stacked category for once. We have Paco Rabanne now, of course. Now, Paco Rabanne is predominantly now known for their big performing club fragrances. However, I think their best fragrance period was only a special edition in Invictus Aqua. And then when he brought it back, it was bad. That's why I have to rank this brand a little lower. Y'all literally reformulated an all-star for no apparent reason. So that's why, again, Paco Rabanne is in D tier. And last but not least, in D, we have Salvatore Ferragamo. And for him, I'm really not a fan of this brand as far as lower level designers. Like FF Black really hurts my nose. I guess that fresh take on black pepper just hurts me right here. And I don't know, I just can't live through that. Like it smells nice off of other people when I get it off them. But since I don't feel like they're wearable, they're not for me, I have to rank them low. But the reason they're not ranked lower is because I'm actually taking into consideration the exclusive lines of these brands. Courtesy of Chad McChesney, A Gentleman's Journey, if you don't already know who he is, he actually introduced me to some of these cool favorites from Salvatore Ferragamo, which not everyone knows about. I particularly like White Mimosa myself, and I might pick that up in the near future. And because some of those offerings are this brand saving grace, that's why they're only ranked in D tier. But moving on finally out of D tier, because that shit was stacked, we have C tier now, and we're going to start off with Dolce & Gabbana. Now, some of their classic offerings like light blue, light blue for women, and the Dolce Gamana Puram stuff is definitely reformulated, but I still like that stuff personally. Of course, the one for men is always going to be dope. Some of its flankers, like gray, aren't even bad in my opinion. And they could arguably be above this in B tier, but unfortunately, they're racist. Or at least Stefano Gabbana is, and this is my list. I can do whatever I want with it. Fuck it, C tier. Next up in C, we have Dunhill. And if you're unfamiliar with Dunhill offerings, they're predominantly known for some of their classic offerings like Dunhill Desire, for example. But on top of that, recently, of course, the Icon line has been gaining some notoriety and arguably still has some potential. I really like Icon, and I tried my best to like something like Icon Racing, but I just wasn't feeling it at the end. I'd rather have my old Invictus Aqua if possible. And since I feel like some of the win was taking out this brand sales for this line that's why it only gets a C tier but because I like the original so much I'm always going to be on the lookout for future Dunhill releases so let's hope that Icon is actually dope in its next iteration so again Dunhill in C tier next up we have John Varvatos in C tier now and to be honest outside the Nick Jonas stuff which I wasn't a fan of myself I really do feel like there's a lot of pleasant offerings throughout John Varvatos whether it's a warm or a fresh offering the problem of course is the long longevity slash projection. Everyone knows that these fragrances don't really have that kind of performance that you'd prefer from a more brazen looking fashion brand. Since the discrepancy in performance just doesn't make any sense to me, that's why these guys are only in C tier. It's not like they're one of those fresh centric Italian citrusy driven brands where they want to channel that kind of minimalism. I'm supposed to feel like a rock star in John Vorvedo's clothes, but I don't feel like a rock star with their fragrances. Because of that performance, again, that's why they are in C tier. And last but not least, we have Yves Saint Laurent. And honestly, the only thing saving this brand right now 
is some of those exclusives again too. Like tuxedos, dope, trenches on my buy list. Like I need some of this stuff in my life right now. But what I don't need in my life is some of them flankers from Lama, I'll tell you that. Like most of the good ones have been reformulated to death and or are discontinued. So I just can't be dealing with YSL right now. Who knows, maybe the Y line will actually interest me in the near future, but for whatever reason right now, it's not. So that's why these guys are stuck in C tier. But nonetheless, we're gonna move on to the B tier. So we're gonna start off with Bulgari. Yes, Bulgari, not Bulgari. And Bulgari should arguably be lower right now because they discontinued their best fragrance in Aqua Amara as far as the men's stuff. Like Jeremy Fragrance put it, I thought that it was a really nice way to put for that fragrance and calling it the strength of the ocean. And I actually definitely agree and see that to have a non-blow like freshy in the designer level actually last and be as pleasant, I thought was really cool. We no longer have that out of this brand. So you might be wondering why are they still stuck in B tier? Believe it or not though, for them, I'm actually a big fan of the Tay line unisex wise. Vera and Rouge I think are stellar offerings and I hope to explore them in the future on this channel. And since I still feel like their aquatic fragrances outside of Amara are still decent and very evocative of what this brand really is, I think that's why B is like the minimum. I can go for uh, Bulgari. So yeah, hopefully Bulgari improves in the near future. We'll see for now. B tier. Next up, one of my favorite brands outside of fragrance, we have Cartier. And Cartier, of course, is known for things like Roadster and Declaration within their fragrances. But to be quite honest, I haven't really been moved by anything within that lower level designer stuff. But if you want to look through more of their exclusive stuff, Good Lord, Laser, like that stuff is actually pretty good. Uh, and D specifically, I think, are pretty pleasant stuff. So if you have a chance to go to your local Cartier dealer, then maybe you can smell some of these fragrances because I doubt you can find them outside of Cartier stores, but yeah, I think they're a pleasant surprise if you were to walk in and not only buy some watches, but buy some fragrances. So Cartier and B, but I really want them to step it up with some of their lower level offerings too. Next up in B though, we do have Givenchy, and I feel like Givenchy is one of those lines that has a little bit of everything for everyone, regardless of price point or regardless of gender, I feel like they're kind of doing a good job. Men's wise, you have Gentleman, you have Pioneer, uh, you have Gentleman Only Absolute. I feel like there's some decent offerings for any occasion there. And of course, as far as their higher level unisex stuff, you have L'Atelier de Givenchy. Cure Blanc is a really pleasant musky leather fragrance if that's the kind of thing you're into. I know Imagine Scent is. I definitely suggest that you at least try some of that. So kind of a sleeper house lately because of the variety that not everyone's talking about, but I have to give them some props here. That's why they're in B. Again, it's Givenchy. Next up in B, we have the super deserved OG glass company in Lalique. And I think Lalique does a really good job low key as far as both genders for fragrance here. Like I think women's wise, Amethyst is a really appealing fruity type of scent. Kind of underrated, I'm not sure if that's getting some talk in 2019, but I think it should be. Men's wise, it goes without saying that white is pretty good as well for something fresh. And of course that's been cloned since by Parfums de Marly just to show that that stuff is super appealing, that they're willing to do it. But of course the crown jewel of La Lique, at least for me and most of you I think, would be Encre Noir. Really experimental stuff on the designer level, trying to make that stuff smell like black ink, but kind of wearable at the same time. I think it's really cool. If I had to pick a favorite from the four, it'd probably be Encore Noir Spore. So yeah, just overall great stuff from my leak and thumbs up, you guys get a B tier. But moving on in B, we have a brand that is a good friend of this channel, I guess you could say. Used to cover these guys a lot. We have Thierry Mugler. And they're known for their various lines with at least one good thing in it, whether it is masculine, feminine, unisex, or sometimes even exclusive. So based on that variety alone, they do get a B tier. However, I must say that the Mugler cologne line from last Last year, I feel like uh, I was expecting a little bit more from. That's how I feel now in retrospect, but if you guys wanna get my review of that, I'll leave it in the description below. Of course, the Amen line is what it is. I think that they've kind of expunged all they could from the initial DNA, so who knows if they do something new with that in the coming years. But female-wise, the Aura line has been pretty pleasant for my nose, and I really am looking forward to getting my nose on the Sensuel version now, so we'll see how that is. But for now, they are in B tier. Again, it's Thierry Mugler. And next up in B, yes, B is a pretty stacked category here. We have uh, Valentino. Now, Valentino does a lot of good stuff. I can't front. You know, a lot of them are pretty pleasant as far as the Womo line. But at the end of the day, some of the ones I am after mentioning aren't very original. That's because they kind of just got Olivier Polge to recreate some of his previous Dior magic. Trust me, Valentino smells as good as A tier for me. But since they had to swagger Jack a perfumer just to get him onto the list in the beginning, that's why they only make the B tier. Moving on now, though, in B, 
we do have another Italian brand here in Versace. And I have to give Versace props. Like I don't own any right now, but there are a lot of relevant fragrances within the Versace Poram line, for example. They were able to generate some hype with Eros Flame, which I didn't like, but I feel like kind of did its job as far as getting them some notoriety in fragrance again. I have to give them props for that. So now I feel like they're one fragrance away from keeping them in B tier minimum in years to come. So yeah, B tier it is for Versace. And last but not least, we have the super hallowed as of late, Victor and Rolf. Now, of course, they're known for their women's lines like Bon Bon and Flower Bomb, but as far as the men's stuff, we really do love that Spice Bomb. So whether it's original or fresh or extreme, we really love that kind of stuff. But since Night Vision was kind of a flop and they really don't have any men's fragrances, to me that are noteworthy outside of this, because of course, Antidote has been discontinued. That's why Victor and Rolf is only in B here. They had a little bit more variety for men, I think I would put it in A minimum. But I think that about does it for B. Now we're moving on to the A category. And in A, it looks like we're gonna start off with Bottega Veneta. And this brand kind of suffers from that John Barbados syndrome in which a lot of their mass pleasing offerings don't actually perform that well. A lot of variety though, whether it's from their mainline offerings or their Parco Palladiano line, I just really like how this stuff smells again, despite the performance. So that's why they're in A tier. Hopefully this channel gets a feature Laro in the near future. Definitely buy slash bottle worthy from me right now. We'll see going forward with Bottega Veneta. But we're gonna move on now to Chanel. And a lot of y'all might be wondering, holy crap, Chanel is in only A tier. Like what else can supersede this shit? Come on. But the reason Chanel is in A tier only is because every line fucking got reformulated. Like how are you gonna make something eau de parfum and it's worse? Like just Chanel, I swear. So whether it's a Lure Online or whether it is some of their female offerings and or especially less exclusive to Chanel, good God, am I pissed off at the fact that this stuff just smells not as good now. Like the opening notes are still dope for some of the less exclusives, but holy crap, does it hella get worse in the dry down. And honestly, I love those EDT so much, like Bois d'Azile, Trente Un, Rue Cambon, stuff like that. But I feel bad talking about them on my channel just because not everyone's gonna be able to experience that stuff nowadays. Hence, I no longer really do talk about them anymore. Five years ago, I swear this brand would have been SSS tier, but right now, only A. They're lucky that they're my favorite designer brand of all time, but what can you do? A tier Chanel. Moving on to another community favorite though, here we have Christian Dior. And honestly, CD is one of those other brands that have since reformulated most of their fragrances too. But it's arguably furthermore for the better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it. Like Chanel will sack a fragrance of smell and performance, but Christian Dior will actually change that shit. Like what is it? We have three different versions of Dior Homme Sport, for example, two different versions of Eau Sauvage Parfum. Like this is all within a decade or less. And to me, that's kind of scary and or indecisive. Like a lot of these things are kind of seen as more niche on the designer level. How much more do you want to furthermore move them? I thought Sauvage was for that level of sales, but I guess they want to move everything else. So that's why they've done such a thing. But since they have so much variety within men and women's offerings, I have to put them in A tier. But I do have to point out a furthermore disappointment in the exclusive tier here. La Maison Dior now is just overran with fragrances I'd expect out of other brands. So shame on them for discontinuing stuff like Mitsa and Vetiver and Eau Noir. Fragrance DNAs like that are what made Christian Dior a uh, fragrance community favorite. And since they kind of are moving away from more experimental, warmer oriental offerings, that's why they're only in A tier. But moving on with A, we have Giorgio Armani. Holy crap, Armani, Chanel, and Dior only in A tier. What do I have in store in S? Of course, this brand is known for Aqua de Joe, like the best-selling men's fragrance of all time. And outside of that line, they've kind of expanded on some of the favorites like uh, Armani Code, for example. And since they have at least one dope flanker per awesome fragrance, that's why I have to put this brand in its relevance for A tier. Armani Privés are also good. It Armani Privés are also really good if you ask me, like Rose Darabi, Iris Celadon, and of course, uh, Mer Imperial. So yeah, I can't hate on too much on each of the lines here. So that's why they really do it for me. So Giorgio Armani in A tier, they've been A tier minimum for the last 20 years, so salute to them. Next up also in A now, we have Maison Martin Margiela. Of course, they're known for the replica line and honestly, for a really recent brand who just jumped into fragrance, I think it is fair for them to be in A tier because they've done a pretty good job in my opinion as far as marketing their stuff and making some at least super wearable offerings. I like how they really jumped into trying to storytell on the designer level too with By the Fireplace, Jazz Club, even though Beach Walk is kind of so bad
bad, it's good. I have to name it. But yeah, I really can't wait for what they're going to do next. And as a result, I have to put them in A tier for now. Now moving on, still in A tier, here we have Narciso Rodriguez. And you might be wondering if you're aware of this brand in Narciso Rodriguez, why do they make this list at A when they only do one note in Musk? But to be fair, they manipulate Musk really well for various occasions. And I think most of their Musks are really good. Like whether it's Rouge or Santal Musk or for him or for MEDP, like the list goes on. The brand knows what it is. They don't really follow trends and they're still dope. So that's why they are in A tier. And last but not least in A, we have the Soap Kings. That's what I'm going to call them. It's Prada. And yeah, Prada has been kind of scheming with how they've been stealing some fragrances from other brands lately, but they're arguably just as good. On top of that, you still have stuff like Amber Puram. You also have the Luna Rasa line, which I find to be pretty pleasant too. Yeah, I really can't be too critical of Prada. Yeah, the performance is there for soapy fragrances. Yeah, definitely A tier. But hey, that about does it for A. We gotta go on to S tier now. Here we go. So some brands here that you might expect to wind up on a Cascade Sense S tier class. Some brands that you might have forgot about. We're gonna start off with that potential first brand. You see me wearing a lot of their stuff in my videos. It's Calme des Garçons. I'm a big fan of this brand in and out of fragrance, but in fragrance, they're arguably more experimental in comparison to their play line at least. Stuff like Two Men, Black Pepper, Floriental, I think are really cool as far as their mainline offerings. I also really like Hinoki and of course the Incense series. I can't really complain about those right there. Like I like those fragrances so much that I want all of them. And of course you guys know I'm already talking about Kyoto a lot and Avignon. The fact that this brand is kind of crossing between what is designer and niche I think is really cool. So that's why they wind up in S tier. Also for what you get on the designer level as far as experimentation I think they are pretty priced accordingly. So yeah I do have to give them props for that too. Comme des garçons for the win. I feel like I should be wearing a CDG play sweater right now but I'm not. Next up we have Hermino Gildo Zen and honestly, Xenia is one of those brands where their mainline offerings are so irrelevant for me. So you might be wondering why do they make S tier anyway? And that's because they're more elevated fragrances like Mediterranean Neroli, Sicilian Mandarin, Florentine Iris, I think are so darn good. Like exclusive wise, I've yet to find a whack fragrance from that brand. Shout outs to Chad McChesney, <laughs> Gentleman's Journey for introducing me to those ones too. I swear Chad been putting in some work for me this list though. Thank you so much. But for the ultimate smart, casual, minimum, or formal kind of sense for men for something safe yet artsy at the same time this is the brand that i'll almost always point people to you know if you want to spend that money so yeah Hermeno Gildo Zenia, definitely S tier. Moving on in S tier to Hermes now. And Hermes, holy crap, how can I not put them here? Whether it's their vintage offerings like Bellamy, Bellamy Vetiver, or if it's Terre d'Hermes and its flankers, or the Hermesence line, I just, oh, I love them so much. They don't really follow trends too, they just kind of do what they do. They know as far as French designer brands, they're going to be the forerunners in Citrus, with Jean-Claude Elena formerly being the head of their brand fragrance-wise. But we'll see in the coming years if they're able to maintain this S tier status. Right now, they are still that for me because those fragrances are still there, but we'll see with future new releases and not. So yeah, Hermes for the win, still love them. But moving on now to arguably the most obligatory S tier brand on designer list right now, here's Tom Ford. And Tom Ford, where do we start and end with Tom Ford? Whether it's a signature collection like Black Orchid or Grey Vetiver, or of course the really, really vast Tom Ford Private Blend Collection, you just gotta give these guys props. Like for me, they're really the only designer brand who's kind of revolutionized the take on designer fragrances in the last 10 to 15 years. Like as far as how we think of them, we think of designer fragrances with so much prestige, at least on the exclusive level, because of Tom Ford. So some of those heavy hitters still exist, Noir de Noir, Tobacco Vanille, Tuscan Leather. Mind you, they're reformulated in death, so I understand why some people would demote this brand. However, some of this new stuff that keeps coming out is still pretty good in the last few years. I actually do like fucking Fabulous. I do like Veni Fatale. I do actually like Costa Azura Aqua too, so they can do the fresh stuff as well. It just seems like regardless of genre, Tom Ford private blends and just Tom Ford in general just can't do any wrong. So yeah, they have to be S tier. Price just sucks ass because it just keeps going up every, every year. But then again, Tom Ford wants these fragrances to be for a certain type of person. So I understand why he is doing that as a marketing genius that he is. But for me right now with the scent kind of superseding that kind of price quality, that's why they are atop this list also an S. Tom Ford for the win. 
But there it is for him. Hopefully you enjoyed my designer brand tier list. Holy crap, that was a lot of information right there. Or rather anecdotal information. That's just how I feel about all these brands. Come on. So please do not be too salty <laughs> at some of what I have to say here. I was just trying to be honest with y'all. But I would love to see what you guys would say in the comments below. Again, as always, 500 likes and a random commenter in the comments will be the lucky recipient of an assorted niche fragrance sample pack. So again, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment as always. Until then, again, I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say. Take care for now. Peace out. Bye. Wear your fragrances.